Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Thought I'd give you a bit of an update on the fish room. Um, got some things going on, so I might as well talk you through them. I'm actually just clearing up after a massive flood in here, but for once it wasn't because of any of my fish tanks. Um, the washing machine is in this room as well, and that just went and it's been spraying water everywhere. So I've just been cleaning all that up, as well as getting ready to do all my tasks. First job first is I need to give all these tanks a manual water change. So these are pretty much the only tanks, that shelf and that shelf, that um, in this fish room that aren't on an automatic system. Everything else is on a, trip, a drip system, rather. So you'll see over here, I've got my HMA filter. That comes in from my main water feed. So the water comes in along the roof, down there, hot and cold. Uh, you can mix it to temperature, it goes through this three-stage filter and then drips into all my tanks automatically and then they all overflow. But I haven't added these two uh, shelves worth of tanks to that system yet. So these are my guppies, that's the, the project that we talked about a couple of videos ago. Um, they're doing really well. This tank here spitting out babies like no tomorrow. So this is the red tank, the blue tank and the yellow tank. I'm going for muck guppies rather than trying to keep any specific line breeding or specific strains going. So I'm going for fish with just those traits and trying to keep them together. Um, no babies in these two tanks yet, but yeah, this one that's spitting them out like no tomorrow. In fact, I've even I've added, I know I said in my last video, I'm not a huge fan of breeder boxes, but I've just taken out some of the guppies uh, from that tank and put them into here, just so as I could have a bit of a closer look at their development really. Because um, I think that's one of the benefits of a, a breeder box like this is that you can get really get right in there and see what's going on and you can see the development coming along um, much easier than you can if they're in a tank like this where they're hiding away in all the plants. But I thought with the sheer amount of fry that's getting dropped I don't think they have enough plants in there to hide behind so I grabbed out I don't know 10 of them or something like that put them in this breeder box and then I can see what the development rate is like. Um, so if they grow better in with the parents, I'll just keep doing that. If they grow better in the breeder box, I might invest in a few more breeder boxes. So we'll keep an eye on that, but that's what I'm thinking. Um, everything's going generally well. Um, so I shall get on with doing these water changes, I suppose. <laughs> So someone asked me in a, an earlier video what I feed my fry when I have fry, so guppy fry being a perfect example of this. Um, I do feed fry foods, so I, the big name brands like anyone else, I will feed them if I've got them. I don't happen to have any at the moment, so I use this stuff here, which is a combination of my own making really, and anyone can make this. It's essentially just crushed up flake, so I take some flake from any other um, tubs that I've got going, and just take a little bit of all the food. So I'll throw in a few hard pellets as well. Um, get half a tub and then just squeeze it between your fingers like this and you can kind of get it into a very fine dust. And I find that works well for guppy fry, even from as soon as they're born. Um, some of the smaller fry I've kept before um, and really small nano fish might not work for. And that's when I would look at things like infusoria and baby brown shrimp and things like that. But Certainly the guppies have had really good success with just going with the crushed up flake food. So give that a try, watch quite well. In fact, let's give some to this, the ones that are in this breeder box. You can see them picking it off. So this breeder box, I quite like it. I'll leave a link in the description if you fancy it. It's quite large, that's why I like it. Um, it's got a good flow in it. Um, a good flow, a good volume that it, it carries in. So it's got a lid with a little hole in it. Just drop in a little bit of the fine dust there. And there you can see the guppies will go up and they'll take that quite readily. They normally will wait for it to float down and then pick it off as they can. But that works pretty well. These fry, they're too small to tell what's going to come from them. Um, they could be red, blue, green, yellow, who knows what. They've come from the red tank, but I think the fish were already pregnant before I put them in there, so God knows what the genetics are. You can see their little bellies getting all full up. So this tank here is the most problematic tank. Well, not problematic as such, but whether it's bad luck, bad judgment, bad skills, whatever it might be, you'll notice that there's only one fish in there now. So while this was a pair, 
um, of rams, that is no longer the case. And why won't you focus on that fish? So this guy is now in here on his own. I came into the fish room a while, few days ago and found his partner on the floor, unfortunately. So it was a bit of a gruesome sight, so I didn't record it or anything. Um, but I'm not quite sure what happened, but obviously it escaped somehow. I have in the past found one fish from this tank in this tank by accident. Um, purely my own fault. So the tank does have a lid on it, but I'd left the lid off and found it in there. So I don't know if they were just fighting and what happened there. But it does even have a lid on it now, and the lid was on it when I lost that fish. So there is a gap here, but it's kind of obstructed by the overflow. So I'm not sure... Well, I suppose it could have got out that gap there. It's just about big enough. So maybe I need to make an even tighter lid or put some kind of mesh over this. Um, and I'd also kept the, the water level quite well. It's not quite low, but I hadn't topped it. The normal water level sits up about here, but I had dropped it an inch or two, hoping that that would avoid any thinking it might jump in there if I left the lid off. But So it's one of those things, unfortunately. Ugh. I guess there'll be some people saying, well, it's just a fish. And there's other people saying, oh, these things just happened. But I never like to see these things. These are animals in my care. So when one of them passes away or dies needlessly, I do feel responsible and it makes me feel down for a little bit. But it is part of the hobby, I guess. Um, but I'm not having much luck with these rams. So that was actually the second partner for this guy. And I don't know what it is about rams, whether they're just bloody suicidal fish. Um, the last ram that I had in here, I, I couldn't do a water change. So while I said earlier that all these tanks are on uh, automatic water changes, I do like to do quite big water changes every now and again just to flush it out if you like. I couldn't do a water change on this tank without the, the old female ram trying to suck herself up into the siphon. She would, I would have to get my hand in there constantly battering her away, making sure she didn't do that. Um, and ultimately that one jumped out as well. And I've never known rams to be jumpers before, but that's now two rams in the space of, it's got to be six months or so that I've lost to jumping. So this guy's now on his own. I think I'm going to give up on rams for a while. Let this guy go upstairs into the big tank, into the discus tank. Um, so we'll take him up there after this and have a bit of a look at how that tank's doing. Um, so I've got some updates for there as well. Uh, rams, they're a pretty good uh, companion for discus because they too like the water a little bit hotter. Um, I've kept rams with discus for years, uh, had no problems at all, and even though they're, these are technically dwarf cichlids, and certainly are in comparison to discus, when you get a breeding pair of rams in a discus tank, it's quite funny to see a small fish like this chasing away a dozen big massive discus fish. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, they do pretty well together, really complementary water parameters and requirements. So we'll get on with that and take him upstairs. Fantastic colours. It's one of the best things about rams is they're so bright and so colourful. Well, so vibrant, I guess, is what we want to go for. Um, especially if you catch them in the right light, that tail is almost kind of iridescent quality. And as the males get older, um, certainly the older ones I've kept have all started to develop streamers off that big top fin, which I just think looks really good. But even this guy just here, clearly wondering why I'm pointing a camera at him, but look at the colours. A fantastic addition to any display tank, I think you'll agree. So if we do move this guy up, Obviously that's going to give me a free tank here, um, either this tank or Penelope's tank. I can move Penelope into that one there. What am I going to do with a free tank? I need some kind of project. So let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, I mean, this one's not the biggest of tanks, but the, the two foot tank, or the two and a half foot tank as this one is, that could give me some options. I'm looking for something interesting to do, something maybe that I've not done before. Um, I always want to come back to Cory's, I've never really bred them properly. I have had the odd baby survive through accidental breeding and things like that, but I've never done it properly, so that might be something. Um, I don't know, what do you think? Um, right, let's get this guy in a little bucket. I've got a little tub up here I can put him in and we'll take him upstairs. This is as good a time as any. If you do like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. 
and you can also join, there's a join button down below, if you click it it'll play a little video to tell you what you get for joining, um, but subscribing, completely free, that's always good, give me a like, let me know down in the comments what you think, um, all helps towards our goal of growing the channel. So. I'll do that and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Well, I'll see you instantly when we go upstairs and put them in the big tank. Right, so we're going to put them in this tank. I've got my little helper who's going to help me out with this. I like to put them, rather than using nets and stuff, I've got lots of these little tubs. So we've got them in there. He's happy enough. All the water parameters are the same, so we've made sure it's the same temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same house, obviously, so all the water's going to be the same. So we don't really need to do any acclimation or anything like that. We can just let them straight in. Yeah, so we'll fun. do that. Can you see? Like, okay. You can see he's trying to come out and I suspect he'll just go away and hide straight away. There he is. Mm -hmm, he looks pretty. He looks nice. See how bright he is. That fish is trying to get it. Done. Done. Hopefully no fish eat it, but that's good. Well, he's getting settled in, doing a bit of exploring. He's over here. Um, I thought I'd show you the rest of the discus tank. So if you remember from the last video, we talked about the black beard algae problem that I was having in this tank. Now, it's obviously still there. Now, you can see the new fish just getting used to things over there. But you couldn't even see the rocks before, whereas clearly, there's been a massive impact made on it. All the plants have started to clear up, there's started to be new fresh green growth. There's obviously still black beard algae all over the place, but look at that. Definitely working. So I have, as well as introducing the silver flying foxes, I have uh, upped the CO2 a little bit more. And that seems to be helping too, because at each water change now, I'm starting to find clumps just lying on the floor, which are either being pulled off by the fish or just dying off themselves. So I think we're well on the way. Well, that'll do for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, that's it, really. We'll hand over to, obviously, the star of the show today to give us the outro. Uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification, and like the video. And, yeah. Bye. Bye. Oh, says the dog. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs>